Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's webinar, which is going to look at five reasons for doing a GIS health check. So um, a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, so what we will be doing is recording the webinar. So you'll be able to um, don't worry about having to take notes and frantically writing things down. Um, you will be able to review the webinar once we've um, completed it. Um, so you'll be able to run through it again and, and more importantly, pass it on to colleagues who might be more who might be interested. Um, you'll be able to submit your questions at any point as well. So on the panel on the right hand side, uh, please feel free to submit as many questions as you want. And we'll do a we'll do a, a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. And then um, finally, there's a there's an exit survey, and that's that's really important to us because it allows us to um, kind of look at future webinars um, that we plan on running. So if you can leave any feedback in, in the exit survey, then that'd be really appreciated as well. And it's just worth bearing in mind as well that today's webinar is going to be between 30 and 40 minutes in duration. So a little bit about the presenters today. So um, my name is Ian Usher. I'm a business development manager at CADCorp and I look after kind of the um, local authority and housing sector organisations um, that uh, currently use CADCorp. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested in making sure that everybody's getting the full um, kind of investment out of the GIS that they've, that they've purchased. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll pass over to Chris, who can introduce himself as well. Thanks, Ian. I'm Christopher Stanley. I work in the CADCorp Technical Services team. We uh, handle things such as uh, customer support. Uh, you might uh, recognize my name on support emails if you're currently a customer with us. We also do things like uh, consultancy services. So we handle installations, upgrades, and uh, uh, health implementation checks. So health checks uh, such as the ones we'll be talking about today, which I've done a few in the past as part of the team. Excellent. Thank you very much, Chris. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to both myself and Chris are going to turn our cameras off, uh, but we are going to turn them back on for a Q&A session at the end. And um, so, again, please feel free to continue um, asking questions as we go through. So I'm going to turn mine off. OK. So um, so the agenda for today's webinar is uh, we're going to have um, a slide on about CADCorp. There's a, there's a handful of users today who are new to CADCorp, so I just thought it's really interesting to kind of give you an overview about who CADCorp are and what we do. Um, before we get into the um, what is a GIS health check and why, um, why, you, would, why you would think about doing one, um, I'm then going to pass over to Chris, who's going to go through the health check process um, from a technical point of view. And then we're going to come back to me for kind of the key takeaways from the session, as well as a, a live Q&A session before we um, summarise the webinar up at the end. So what we what we like to do at this point is um, we just like to be as we might make, make these webinars as interactive as possible. Um, so one of the first things that we do is we usually run a poll just to just to see why people have attended today. So one of the first questions that we've got is if I just launch this. Um, is how long have you had your GIS infrastructure in place? Um, so this kind of, like I say, this kind of helps us um, determine why you've why you've come here today. Is it because you've got you've had GIS for years? Um, you know that it's not performing as well as it should be, uh, and you want to update it, or have you just invested in GIS and went to ensure that you've optimised it um, in order to to get the best performance out of it? So what I'll do is I'll I'll wait a couple of seconds. Um, before we can close the poll so i'm going to close it at that point um so that's really interesting so a lot of you 75 percent of you actually have had your gis for over four years um so that's really interesting so uh, you, i'm assuming that you've all come here today to kind of understand um more about the health check and and kind of what you can get out of it and um how we can how the, the health check can help look at your the infrastructure that you've got already which is great um, we've also got a, a second question, um, which I'm just about to launch. So, would you like to increase the use of GIS within your organisation? So, we've many organisations start with a, a project in mind, um, and the that can then lead on to increasing the GIS within the organisation. Um, but you need to make sure that the infrastructure was right, correct in place to start with, and it is going forward. So, it's a really good. Um, it's a really good question for us to understand whether you're looking at increasing the use of GIS and ensuring that you've got kind of infrastructure 
um, in place, security, the connection to databases and, and the support of your users as well is a, is a great idea. Um, so again, I'm just gonna give you a couple more seconds. So I'm gonna close that. Uh, and that is uh, that's just an astonishing 100% of, of you have said that you are looking at increasing the use of GIS within your organisation. So that's that's brilliant. I think that's the first question I've had, ever had that's been 100%. So that's brilliant. So thank you very much for that. So that just shows that you you are looking at taking the investment that you've made in GIS and making that available across the organisation and expanding on the use of it, which is great. Um, so, um, so as I've said, we're... There are a, a nice mix of new users and existing customers here already. So I just thought it'd be good to kind of um, summarise who CADCorp are. So um, CADCorp are a UK based software development company and we develop the Spatial Information System or the, or the CADCorp SIS. And we've been building the CADCorp SIS application for 25 years and it provides web, mobile and desktop based mapping applications. And we sell these mapping applications across multiple different sectors. So um, as you can see at the bottom, we are predominant in the housing sector, within local and central government, um, within the emergency services, and then within the insurance and infrastructure as well. And what we what we focus on is the software development. So we're always listening to the requirements of our users and developing the applications accordingly. So this is this infographic kind of gives you an overview of what the spatial information system is. And as I say, we we provide that um, spatial information system and that that allows us to to um, provide to the customer web, mobile and desktop based mapping applications. So just a bit of an overview is the desktop application. Uh, desktop GIS is used for the creation and editing of GIS data. Um, it supports lots and lots of different data formats. Um, and it also provides a detailed analysis. So things like your um, routing analysis and your hotspot analysis, or maybe just simple thematic maps, for example, um, can all be created within the desktop GIS. And that's also used for our um, kind of our, our administration tool for then publishing the data to the web as well. And the web and mobile um, GIS provides us with the opportunity to query and visualize spatial information over the web. And it's designed to be a really simple, and easy to use interface for members of the public to go onto a website or internal colleagues to go onto a website and query the spatial information that you're making available through the GIS applications. Uh, and it's also worth noting that the, the desktop and um, web-based applications can either be um, cloud hosted and managed or um, we can install them locally. So we're really flexible in terms of the deployment options that you've got um, when it comes to, to desktop and web-based mapping as well. So uh, what is a GIS health check? So the first thing I thought of was a, a health check is effectively a doctor's appointment for your GIS software. Um, it provides a, a check to ensure that everything is running smoothly, but also looks at things in more detail to identify potential problems or issue before they might occur. So it's a great opportunity to review a number of areas that are important to the way that your GIS is set up. So um, the first thing we think about um, when we think about a GIS is um, the infrastructure, the laptops we use, the server applications that our web mapping are running on. If we purely focus on infrastructure, it's difficult to gain a comprehensive review of our GIS and gauge what's important to your users, but it's still a really important aspect to take into account. Data is a really important aspect as well, and that drives the importance of GIS. You might have a number of layers that are used three to four times a month and others that are accessed by many across the organization or hundreds of times a week. But the GIS is dependent on the data being easily accessed from a number of different data sources. It's also really important for users to understand how important the data is that they are creating and editing. Um, and and that, that can be portrayed as part of the bigger part of the bigger picture of the GIS applications as well. Desktop GIS provides the capability to link to all the data your organization has and conduct advanced analysis that can be shared with users across the organization. It's really important that your desktop GIS tools and the infrastructure that is that they sat on are, all, are up to the demands that might be placed on them from your user base. And then finally, web mapping is always improving. Websites are getting faster, improving technologies, making them more accessible and providing more functionality to provide to your user base. You want to ensure that your users have everything that they need in order to undertake the tax, tasks that they have and the speed in which they have delivered is good. In today's world, other web mapping applications such as Google Maps, 
drive user expectations in terms of speed and functionality available for, for web mapping effectively. So um, you've come here today, so we, we're going to now tell you there's, there's five reasons that we think you should look at completing a GIS health check. So since your initial GIS was set up, there may have been a number of changes with the IT infrastructure. It's been installed and set up to host GIS to the best of the organization's ability. But as we've mentioned already, technology changes really quickly. The incorrect hardware or software has potential to have an impact on the efficiency, speed and responsiveness of GIS that you provide within your organization and to your users and the members of the public that are accessing it. The health check provides an accurate and complete picture of your existing setup. So taking a look at the bigger picture can highlight changes in hardware infrastructure and security um, that might not get seen just simply by looking at the infrastructure or the databases or the desktop GIS. So it's providing a, a bigger picture of everything um, that we're taking a look at as part of the, the whole package of the GIS. As you can imagine, every setup is configured differently, but there are standard options within software that allows users to learn where settings can be adjusted to improve load times and service delivery. As an example, understanding how best to serve out the base mapping and data files, as well as how and when to apply scale thresholds, can all influence how quickly your maps appear and respond from your users under interrogation. Sometimes external validation can provide the basis for securing stakeholder approval on upgrading servers and providing enhancements within the applications to improve the, the functionality that's available to your users. And then finally, it's a great opportunity to review your existing setup before a cloud migration process. The health check provides an understanding of what needs to be updated, whilst also highlighting the potential benefits of moving your applications and software into a cloud environment, for example. We have previously held different webinars looking at cloud migrations, and these can be all found on the, on the CAD Corp um, YouTube channel if you wanted to take a look um, and find out more details. Um, so now I've told you what a health check is and the reasons for um, maybe requiring one, I'm going to pass you over to Chris who can talk more about the process for our customers. So I'm just going to share my screen with Chris and I will let Chris take over. Thank you, Ian. Right, so what we do as part of the technical services team when we do the health check, we start by trying to get a overview of uh, the infrastructure that is in place. Um, it, pretty much every single customer has a unique GIS solution. I've never been on a customer site or seen a customer setup that was ever replicated somewhere else. So we start by going over your uh, servers, the software that you have, and uh, try to get the complete picture. Um, so, so the setup then can be that uh, uh, either you have a desktop application just installed on one uh, machine, so you have desktop and perhaps some add-ins. Uh, this machine might also be connected to a shared drive where you have uh, your data storage, so perhaps you have multiple desktop <coughs> users uh, all sharing the same data storage. Um, there can also be uh, web applications involved. So this requires a server to host a web mapping application and the web application itself. Um, further, you might have a separate server for possibly an external uh, web mapping application that needs to sit outside of a uh, firewall, so in, in a so-called DMZ zone. And uh, all of these different combinations uh, add up and, and sort of contribute to what is your uh, infrastructure, your GIS infrastructure. And, and whether it's just the one desktop or multiple desktop or multiple servers, we get this overview and uh, uh, provide this as part of the health check. So this is uh, part of the beginning of the health check and, and that we record for you. Obviously, we also need to ensure that the hardware is uh, uh, up to par. There are a number of uh, uh, requirements for running GIS software. 
uh, as Ian mentioned, technology evolves. So it's not just uh, hardware, but also software. And uh, the various different combinations will change over the years. And uh, it might be a costly venture to upgrade servers and the machines that the software is running on. Perhaps you've maintained the same uh, server over many years and uh, been updating the software, at which point it might not be sufficient for what you're using it for. So we look at the hardware that you're uh, running your GIS software on. And, and this also includes uh, database servers, which hosts your uh, geospatial uh, data. Uh, there are minimum requirements for that too, in order to run the heavy operations that GIS generally involves. We also look at your software. So there's hardware, there's software. We look at the, the uh, versions that you have installed. So different applications. Uh, are you running uh, the latest of the software in desktop or web, server and add-ins? Uh, are you running multiple versions? Um, so we try to get that uh, complete picture as well. Uh, what is there and, and what is actually used? Um, and, and then obviously uh, another very important part of GIS is the data. Ian has already mentioned that too. The spatial data is uh, uh, what, what we consume as part of a GIS a user, as a GIS user, uh, it's all about the data. And depending on how the data is stored, uh, where it is being uh, read from, it can really uh, impact your use of the uh, GIS application uh, if it's not uh, as we would consider correctly uh, set up. So we do advise and review the data uh, loading times in the desktop application, uh, making sure that there are no uh, missing data connections or that uh, there are some old data sets that perhaps are no longer supported. And uh, that is something that we take particular time looking at. Finally then, when we've completed our entire uh, health check, uh, then we do a support, supply a report. So this uh, uh, is going to be provided uh, to the customers once uh, the check is done. Uh, so this is our uh, customer uh, report, which will contain a, uh, uh, a, a, sp a detailed analysis of all the different uh, points that we cover in our health check. And, and for each one, there are uh, uh, ratings where we rate the uh, various parts. So whether the ha hardware or software is uh, uh, working as expected, then we rate it as a green number one. If any aspect uh, is partially working or might need some more attention, we uh, give it a two um, and provide details on what it is that's not quite correct or what's missing or what could be done further. And lastly, if there's something that um, uh, is defective or critical and that requires uh, attention immediately or perhaps uh, investigation, it, it might not be known what is going on or uh, for some reason, it impacts severely your uh, GIS uh, infrastructure is given a uh, sort of red uh, three review. Uh, and obviously with uh, supporting comments on what is going on to the best of our knowledge. So we look at um, the software as uh, mentioned. So we list all the installed software, the versions, uh, the infrastructure, so the different uh, servers, if there are multiple, uh, which software are on which servers to sort of provide this uh, complete picture. As part of the report, you can see things like these uh, charts of um, 
uh, where we test loading times. So this is uh, from Sys desktop. So the desktop application, seeing how your data loads. Um, in this particular instance, there's no uh, major issues with the loading times, even though uh, th there's one or two that uh, are, are significantly slower than, than the rest. They don't really have a major impact on the overall use of the system. So it's given a, a clean uh, number one, a green. And uh, we provide recommendations. So here's uh, another uh, example where in a web map application, there is a um, instance of the base layer as part of the map features. In CADCorp web map in particular, there's a separate base layer switcher and the base layer should not be part of the uh, map features. It allows users to turn on and off the base map on top of an existing base map. So although it's not critical, it is not uh, technically wrong, it's not the ideal way to set it up and it can confuse users. So here we've provided a two and recommendations on how to uh, uh, proceed and correct this. And that is what I wanted to share with you on our process from technical services. I'm going to hand back to Ian for the key takeaways. It's a really good insight into the um kind of technical um, look that's taken at the infrastructure and security and databases. So thank you very much for that, Chris. That provides a, a good overview. So um, before we move on to the um, Q&A session, um, I just wanted to highlight kind of the key, key takeaways to take away from today. So um, so starting at the top, so performing a, performing a health check um, review can be a good opportunity to review that existing hardware setup, that existing GIS setup. Um, as, Chris has, as Chris has mentioned and looked at. Um, we, there's a lot that can change hardware, software, number of users since the initial implementation of your GIS system all affect how it is running now. So, um, you know, four years ago, you had it set up to cover the number of users that you'd got, the databases that you were using. Um, now, that's four years moved on. So you might need to just have that initial review just to take a, a better look and understand better what might be, need to be improved um, in order to get things moving nicely. So being advised on how simple setup and configuration changes can improve load times and efficiency can make a huge difference to the end users of your applications and their opinions of, you, of the GIS going forward. Because a, a third party um, has taken has completed the report, you might find that you receive more backing from stakeholders in order to hold conversations about upgrading to latest versions of software or purchasing um, add-ins that could enhance the functionality of their applications further to um, give your users more um, visibility of functionality within the web mapping applications and desktop based map, uh, desktop applications as well. The health check might confirm the requirement to migrate to the cloud. There's, there are many benefits of moving to the cloud, but the fact that somebody else is responsible for the hardware and updating the software could be all you need to make that decision to move to the cloud. Um, and then finally, all of the points above lead us to ensuring that the systems you have in place are meeting the desired business outcomes and have the correct tools in place for ensuring the future of your GIS systems as well. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, both myself and Chris are gonna turn our cameras back on um, and we're gonna do a, um, maybe a five or 10 minute Q and A session um, um I suppose it's worth it's worth saying that we've conducted a number of these health checks before for existing customers. Um, and what we're going to do to to kick things off, if I can find my button, is just kind of look at some of the common questions that are asked from customers before they have the, the health checks in place. Um, so while we're asking this, please feel free to continue. I can see there's a number of different questions already. Um, so please feel free to continue asking your questions. But I just thought we'd start off with some of the common questions that users ask before they have the um, uh, health check done. Um, so, Chris, um, I suppose the first one's with you. So how, how long does the review take? So generally, a health review will take one day. We'll spend one day uh, doing the, the reports and analysis 
of uh, the system and uh, as far as yeah so we spend one day on the customer system brilliant excellent and and once that review's taken place the how long does it take before the report is sent across to them right so the report will be done in the days following so it might be another uh, day or a few days uh, depending on uh, the amount of uh, work that goes into the report. Brilliant, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so, do you need on-site ac access for a health check? So we don't need to be there physically uh, unless the customer does not have uh, uh, remote uh, access for third parties. So now, since COVID, uh, most companies have remote access and we've been doing everything uh, virtually uh, through remote access, VPNs, and uh, we, we don't need physical access to customer sites. Yeah, brilliant, that's good. That's good, everything everything changed. Well, as everybody's aware everything changed, so having that ability to just simply log on and look at servers and things is really, really beneficial. Um, so that's, that's, that's good. Is there any resources required from the customer? Do you need to talk to the database administrators or um, IT people? So we we try to clear all that before we gain access to the customer site, but uh, we do generally require to have administrative access, and uh, it's always a good idea to have uh, IT and GIS contacts on hand for the day to answer any questions that might arise. Um, there might be some confusion and uh, some sort of help in navigating the customer servers is always a good thing. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so the next question that we get usually asked is, can a customer suggest what they, what they want CADCorp to look at as part of the health check? Absolutely. Usually a customer has a specific reason why they want to have a health check and uh, they, they will approach us with, uh, with what they're looking for. They have perhaps uh, something that's not working right or something they want to improve and they ask us to have a look at uh, ways and come up with uh, suggestions for that specific reason. So we certainly do take that into account, but uh, they, that is a part of the whole um, health check. So we still do the full health check, but uh, we do pay uh, special attention to uh, any requests. Yeah, I, I, as Chris said, I, I think I'd definitely recommend that. I think if the customers, um, you know, looking at their infrastructure or security and worried about load times or um, has, has concerns around infrastructure, I definitely recommend that having a, a pre-meet go through kind of your concerns first First off would be more beneficial because then we can focus focus our, um, our uh, kind of insight into the specific things that customers have said. So that's really good. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, so who can who can implement the recommendations from the report? You say that it returns kind of a advisory and a recommend recommendations. Who can who can implement those changes? So as we provide the report from this health check, we supply the report to the customer, and that contains the details of the the changes and recommendations. So the the it's up to the customer to implement these changes. But uh, we, we do offer uh, our own services, our own consultancy services as well. So I have been part of uh, doing a number of these where we help customers uh, make the changes that uh, we've recommended as part of our uh, consultancy services. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a, it's usually a good question. We, we do offer CAD Corp. Are really good obviously we understand the software ourselves really well um so you know it's really good for us to be able to implement those changes um uh, that are recommended from the health check um, and we do provide a, a kind of a managed service consultancy that can go with that as well um and then i suppose the the last question on this in this list is uh, kind of talking about security so what security measures the cad corp have in place to ensure data integrity right so in our health checks, even though we, we have access to customer sites and data, we, we don't actually need access to the, the data itself. 
Um, we run the reports in the desktop application, but uh, we're very much accustomed to working with uh, customer servers. Um, I, I think it's almost a, a daily job for us in technical services to, to work on customer service, uh, servers uh, with customer data. We have uh, a lot of customers with uh, highly sensitive data within police and uh, other emergency services. So um, we, we're very much accustomed to protecting customers and, uh, and their data. We, we know how to navigate the, the servers and uh, the software in order to protect the customer and uh, uh, making sure that there are uh, necessary backups in case we do uh, need to touch anything that might affect a system. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, so that's that's really good. So that's all the kind of the common questions that are asked as part of the setup that I've certainly come across when I've been talking to customers. So thank you very much for going into that. Um, there has been quite a few questions, um, to be fair. So um, I'm going to throw the first one your way, Chris. So somebody, so Josh Street has asked, um, would the system, which is a really good question to be fair, would the system need to go down at all while you're completing the health check? Yeah, so generally, no. Uh, we, we don't take the system down. We, we don't implement any changes. What we're doing is we're reviewing how it is working uh, in its current state. So we don't make changes when we're uh, doing these uh, implementation reviews or this health check. So we, we, we're not uh, interfering in, in the current setup. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That's good. Um, there's also a question, how well do physical hardware specifications translate into virtual hardware specifications? So to the best of my understanding, I'm not an expert on hardware and virtual machines, but uh, they, they, they do translate. So you, you can get the uh, corresponding, um, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the processor power, the number of cores, the memory, um, all of that uh, translates into the virtual machines as well. So our minimum recommendations and uh, recommended specifications, um, they apply for both uh, sort of standalone hardware and virtual as well. Brilliant. That that one was from Darren. So I think um, I think Darren, we might have to have a uh, more of a um, specific conversation around what you were what you were looking at trying to do to understand the requirement further. I think would be uh, would be um, would be a, a good solution as well. Um, I've got one more one more from Sharon. Um, so with the health check, do you rectify any errors that you find? So I suppose as part of the health check, it's, it might point at databases being in wrong locations and things like that. Would we rectify them on site? Right. No, our, our job as uh, part of this uh, health check is to identify the the current needs in the uh, GIS infrastructure and, and the setup. Um, so, so what we're specifically um, requested to do is to do a health check and uh, not as um, as we said, we're, we're not actually doing the consultancy of implementing these checks. We're not um, going to make any changes to your system. So we try not to um, touch it. Uh, we're just uh, looking at the way it is. Yeah, but then, but then anything, as we've said, I think it's one of the common questions, as we've said, if there's anything that we do find and you, you want CADCOP to implement that for you after the initial um, survey has been done, then we can we can do that as part of a as part of a consultancy. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so I think that's the majority of the questions that have been answered. Um, so uh, I suppose that it's been a, it's been a really good webinar. Thank you very much, Chris, for for helping us from a, a technical support point of view. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, thank you very much for everybody um, attending. If there are any further questions, please feel free to submit them through the exit survey. Um, and obviously, as I said at the start, that XC survey is good for letting us plan future webinars as well. So thank you very much um, for answering those in advance. Um, and um, it's um, I'll say goodbye and have a great morning. And thank you very much for um, attending the webinar today.